Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining me once again on this reverse recruitment 0% growth LTC. It's a little dark out right now. I'm pretty sure I brought someone else along, but I can't seem to. Ooh. Oh, gosh, there he is. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, it was me. I was hiding under the couch cushions. I've been here since October. Am I on time? I think you are. You're, you're right in time to see Ike uh, roiding out and Kieran consuming a Master Crown. So, uh, welcome. <laughs> Ike with all these stats? Man, so this is like, what, a promotion, uh, ether skill, two Angelic Robes, and two Draco Shields since the last time we've seen him, right? Correct. On top of the speed wing he already received. Oh, some time ago, yeah. So, I mean, if I'm not wrong, this is basically, at least compared to the enemy stats, this is the most powerful Ike has been and ever will be, right? Correct. He is going to go nuts in this map. He also has uh, his A rank support with Khalil, which grants, for review, two points of attack and 30 avoid. Uh, so he's going to be basically invincible, as the crossbow already tinks him. Uh, oh, also, wow. yeah, the, the Ragnarok gives five defense, as if he needed it. So <laughs> he's he's hulking out. Yeah, even more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, not a, not a bad heap of stats to do. But anyway, so uh, enough about Ike. He's clearly able to just slaughter all these guys. Why don't we talk about this map? So it is currently a route map, which means that we need to go and counterattack everybody who we can, but also find all the guys who don't move or don't counterattack so we can kill them. Correct. So who is that on this map? So we can already see a bishop toward the left there. There are four of them on this map. We got one kind of at, uh, what's that, nine o'clock. Uh, there is one in the bottom right near those bushes, just toward the right of your screen now. Uh, there's one right here, which Mist has with her seven move and torch range barely illuminated. Uh, and then there's one in the bottom right corner of the map near the boss's group. So we're breaking progress there. And uh, as our units spread out, we'll get the rest. Yeah, there's a couple of units who don't attack. There's a couple here who don't move, actually. It's these three warriors, right? So I think they don't move on turn one, or what, what's the deal with them? Correct. Uh, in the first turn, they're programmed to not move. Uh, they attack later. I think the idea is that usually a newcomer will be a little cautious in the fog, so they don't swarm them immediately. Um, but then in later turns, they start attacking. Uh, they will attack, okay. they just won't move. In any case, it's very convenient for your little Ike Khalil duo. Yes. So. They have 23 speed, and Ike has 27. Khalil has just 26, so that's a big deal. Yeah, so it means in this case, we actually do one round them. And so over here, we're just going ahead and breaking the sandbags. I believe that is so that all of these enemies will attack your guys who counterattack, as opposed to sandbags who do not counterattack, last I checked. Yeah, uh, you, because... you checked correctly. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, my, note, my notes still work. I thought I had to rewrite something, but... No, I, I mean, all of these guys on the left side, as long as they attack, I think it's Tanith. They should all go down. I saw your Tanith at a couple forges, and she just promoted. This is probably like your third chapter of using her anyway, right? So, uh, or maybe even more than that, because... Yeah, she's been around for like one eight, one end game and some other stuff like that, so. There we go. Yeah. And a clever use of the stillness here. Yes. To make sure that they always attack Tanith. Very much enjoy that. that I will never not be happy about using Volk like that. <laughs> yeah, it's such a, it's stillness and three houses stealth, both such skills that are like really fun to use. All right, so anyway, Ike's in the mosh pit. We said his stats are pretty good. Is there anything else that's really benefiting him here or? Uh, well, in it... addition to Ragnall and the limited one, two range, uh, he has the provoke skill and Khalil has Shade to complement that. So Ike, at this point, is the better unit to deal with most of these units. And uh, real quick, Tanith needed Leanne's support there with her water affinity and plus one attack to exactly one round that Halberd here. Uh, oh, wow. Yep. I see. It is a very tight benchmark with the Steel Forge she has right now. Uh, sadly, we couldn't put Gareth right there because Gatry needs the spot to break down the bags um, because, as you said, uh, they don't counter, which this guy is really enjoying right now. Oh man, he got away with it. I know. So Can't sad. believe it. This adept proc does not matter because the halberdier gets doubled naturally by Khalil and will die in two hits. Um, and in fact, adept is a skill that I gave to Khalil uh, and kind of regretted it later because we don't actually need it on this map for reasons I will elaborate on in due time. But it would have been really handy on some other maps where units kind of struggle to one round, but they're fast and have a good chance to activate that skill. Yeah, no, it, it does kind of sink for that one, but I mean, for basically every other enemy, they're always going for Ike and they're always dying on Ike. Yeah. So it, this whole provoke shade thing does kind of remind me of the like save your Ike play where you like save your rescue Soren in order to get the benefits from the support. But I guess this is even more flexible because Kalil is still around to do player phase attacks and you like leave a larger footprint for getting counterattacked by enemies. Mm hmm. 
yeah, it's really nice how it works out. So let's see, Nyla's over here. I, I do know that she's still at S rank strike, and I don't really know how far along she is at double S. But... She's most of the way along at this point. Okay, I don't mm -hmm. know if she'll get it in this map or maybe at the start of next. But I do know that this energy drop is definitely coming out handy. I saw she like exactly one routed a general earlier, so. Yeah, the enemy stats, Very they nice. do be increasing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I know it, it's not this map. I know the next map she's going into, like she definitely needs that double S, I think, just seeing how she's pouring against these generals. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about this Maclov because you, pr you promoted Kieran at the start and I didn't really say anything about it. Uh, but now we have Kieran promoted. So why promote Kieran to Gold Knight? Uh, well, that guy that warped in uh, needs to die and Nyla is busy down here. So we have a ranged general, which we would like to attack and we do kill him, mm -hmm. but this horse layer dude like is programmed to not attack on a new phase. I don't know why uh, he moves. He just won't attack. He's um, just friendly. Oh. Yeah, that's Strange. one way to put it, uh, which means that if we want to kill this general, we need someone else to do stuff because Nyla is away. And so Kieran will have a total of three rounds of combat to either hit two hammer hits or proc soul. And so that extra option for dealing with the guy is notable enough that uh, like I had kind of a spare crown that I didn't know what I wanted to use it for, but I figured this is a decent enough spot for it. Yeah, it, it works. And I mean, you, you got to kill this guy anyway, right? And if you if you aren't able to do it this turn, being able to do it on turn three is greater than it's definitely better than letting him live to turn four. And then I have to take an extra turn. So right. it definitely makes sense. It saves a turn. Shout out to the weapon triangle, which we uh, make use of by switching to the sword there to kill that warrior. Exactly. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, weapon triangle. I love having you around in this game. Uh, we got to deal with this thunder mage. He's got crit in everybody. So I got to say, I didn't really uh, ask beforehand exactly like what level of uh, risk you're kind of like willing to tolerate here, especially when it comes to this kind of like facing crit from this thunder mage. So, but you, you find a pretty good way through this, right? Where you just kind of use these three flunkies to try and take him out. I think you only face one attack from him, right? Yeah, because I did look at the crit numbers. Like, we got 8% crit here. Um, and then I look at Gatry's chance to get crit, and it's a little lower at 6. Uh, so really, those are my only two options. I just picked the more reliable option of the two. Um, what I didn't do was move Gareth in time to boost Gatry's hit rate, so very slight misplay. It I didn't get punished for it, but, you know, worth noting. Fair enough. I, d I did see you battle save somewhere earlier in this turn, so I guess if you needed to, then you're able to. Yeah, there's always that fallback. Uh, the Brave Bow is a new reward from a base conversation in this chapter, and Shinon is very happy to have that. Oh, wow. I think I must have replaced the Holy Crown then, or? Yeah, yeah, rip Holy Crown. Yeah. <laughs> we are actually speaking about that earlier, because I saw you uh, training Mist a bunch. I was like, you're trying to promote Mist, and I, th I think we actually have no idea where the Holy Crown is right now. So I am unsure. Missing. Yeah, maybe it's just not mm -hmm. in the game, because I didn't find it when I was playing. Yeah, so how did Tanith go all the way up to the top left and all the way to the bottom center again? She's really moving. Oh, gosh, I didn't even mention. She has Celerity, uh, which okay. is, yeah, it, Tormod has it innately, but we took it off of him in the last map to combo warp it over here. Makes sense then. So he has celerity, or she has celerity rather. Does anyone have the boots right now, or? Uh, no, no one has used the boots yet. If I use the boots, I will show that on screen. Fair enough. By the way, we should mention here we moved Khalil uh, to the northeast of this Pegasus. There's an idea that we have later on that we're going to bring up, um, involving Khalil maybe moving to a different spot. But for right now, you're moving her here in order to provide support for Ike in this mosh pit. Correct. And so. Like, how can, can this mosh pit go wrong at all? Because there's a ton of enemies. I think part three Ike would just, like, evaporate to such a squad. Yeah. Fortunately, we don't have just part three Ike. We have uh, super roided supported part three Ike, or part four Ike, excuse me. Uh, Miss is fine there. She's, she'll be great. She'll heal back. Uh, because the only enemies that really pose a threat to him are the mages, and especially the dark mages, or the druids, have such low hit rates that it's almost not even worth mentioning. Uh, what is worth mentioning is the fact that we provoked uh, Catalina to attack Ike by attacking her previous turn. This activates her ability to move, and one, two range enemies prefer to attack from one range for reasons I don't fully understand, but it means that we are able to rig an ether proc to kill her. Makes sense. So you, you've cleaned up this pit pretty handily, I see. Not too bad. Yeah, it's a really satisfying phase. I, I was really concerned, but... There you go. Raisins, have I ever led you astray? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've made me worry a couple times, but... 
This Pegasus goes off to the bottom right, off to the Fog of War. We'll talk about how we deal with her a bit later when it comes to it. Uh, but for right now, I think Kieran just procced the, uh, the the soul proc that we were talking about earlier, the, the reason we promoted him. Mm -hmm. There's that warrior that didn't move on turn one. And this guy who can attack us from anywhere, as it turns out. Did Tanith have any chance of death in this whole sequence, or is it like still very reliable up to this point? Uh, I think like she needs to dodge one attack. Uh, well, no, I think she did some combat with the Halberdiers earlier, and she might have gotten some dodges there. Um, if she gets hit by everything, I think she has a chance to die here. And we do have a bit of flexibility with Mist that we'll talk about. Uh, fortunately, this reinforcement Halberdier is a non-issue because when Nyla eliminates that pacifist bishop, uh, she is still within range of that dude. Okay, we go ahead and shove Lee in, and... There we go. Perfect. Look at that. <laughs> a one round from Sheenon. Very satisfying. Very indeed. Yeah. Uh, we had Gatry, uh, but, you know, always nice when our action economy is there to spare. Oh, yeah. One round from Sheenon. I was wondering why you were, like, so praising him for the one round, and then I saw his stats for the first time. I'm like, oh, this is not the Sheenon I'm used to. <laughs> huh? uh. Not at all. Uh, that guy has a really, really low chance to hit Tana, who was displayed 10% hit rate, so pretty low risk attack to do there. Uh, the shove from Gatry matters because, uh, well, I guess uh, Tanith could actually canto farther back to get uh, chanted by Lian. And then I really enjoy this move. Look at that. There we go. Shelter Lian. That is kind of sheltering. Yeah, kind of like a, like a fates move. But uh, yeah, Lian is totally safe now because of Volk's stillness skill. So the enemies will go. go for Tanith instead. He just has like a camouflage snowy blanket. He just throws her over her. <laughs> Disappear. Enemies can't see her anymore. Here you go. And this is... All right, so this is the turn, right? This is the sequence coming up here after uh, this other sequence right here. Where Makalov has this very cringe hit rate, right? <laughs> That's the one. And just trying his best, all right, man? Like, yeah, you know, we... Cut we... him some slack could have given him a forged weapon to help that out a bit, but it is meaningful chip damage because uh, gear needs the help. There you go. Or like maybe manipulated his bio in an earlier map. I don't really know exactly how much opportunity he had to do such things. Uh, I'm but... sure I could have. In retrospect, I could have spared money for a, a sword forge. It's probably the best way to do it. So we have Mist here, who if Tanith was really in trouble, could have just gone down and physicked Tanith here for these last two attacks in case she really needed it. In this circumstance, Tanith dodged. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure why I healed Joffrey there. Joffrey, gosh, uh, Gatry. But like you said, the option to heal Tanith exists. And then, okay, options. Yes, this guy. This is a mistake, yeah. Uh, so what I do here is I rig, a, I guess, an adept and a flare. Uh, what I should have done is just heal the bishop with Ike. There's no question about whether that'll work or not. Um, and then what I could do next is... Uh, have Khalil chip the general instead of what Ike is doing here. Uh, if we have been able to move Khalil one space farther, like Raisins brought up earlier, then Khalil would be able to attack the Falcon Knight first uh, to chip her, and she'd be able to trade Ike to a hammer to make sure this one round goes three. Uh, so, better ways to do that than what I actually ended up doing. Um, Which is rigging some ethers, right? So. Yeah, yeah, that's always kind of eh, but it works out. I mean, he's at highest bio, so like, I mean, come on, right? It does help. Like, you did what you could. Well, not everything you could, we just discussed what was everything, but you know, it still worked. We did good. Okay, and uh, that amount of good will land us a clear of 4-1 in three turns. Uh, not too bad. Yeah. That was excellent to watch. Thank you. Join me next time to find out what we need to replicate a fraction of vanilla to Barnes power. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Oh, <laughs> uh,